Our last question comes from Jennifer. What is your opinion on the current state of the advances of the golf ball? That's a good question. You want me to yeah. Yeah. take this one? Uh, I hear a lot of talk about this one. <laughs> we hear a lot of talk on social media. Uh, you even hear from the greats. Um, I love the question about the golf ball. Over the years, uh, is it good? Is it bad? Is it, has it changed so much that it goes further? I know that some of you right now coming into the game of golf, know the golf ball of today and have this excitement that, wow, yes, it goes further. But if we take kind of a philosophical view of this and look at sport and a brand and the protection and integrity of an environment, meaning the game of golf, then one would have to ask the question from start to finish of the game, what equipment would we want to use? And so when I pull back out of the game of golf and I look at who protects baseball, when I think of the brand, the MLB, Major League Baseball Association, when I look at this group and think of, okay, there's a group of people that protect the integrity of the sport so that the people who played years ago, the people that play today, and the people that play 20, 30 years from now all play in the same type of environment with a ball. Because if we change today, had this open environment that any maverick could start a company and have no care to the protection of the consumer, then what we would have is people making baseballs that go further and further and further. And yes, it'd be fun to hit it far, but it would destroy the game of baseball overnight. Because what do we do if the ball goes 600 feet, 700 feet? We just tear down all the stadiums, make them bigger, longer, just because it's fun for a few people to make money making baseballs? No. Because see, there's people who protect the essence of the sport so that it not only protects the players, the batters hitting the ball, but it also protects the history and the newcomers to the game. You would see the same thing in the NFL. You would see the same thing in the NBA. So when we look at big global sports, think of soccer, one of the biggest sports, or football, some would say, in Europe. If we change the ball so that it goes 120 yards in the air, or faster, less spin to it, what would that do to the game? I get it would be cute. I get it would be fun to throw on TV. But that's only looking at today. That's such a short-sighted view because that's what's happening to the game of golf. I love that it's fun to stand up, then with my swing speed, yeah, I want the ball to go further. Why wouldn't I? But do I wanna have the ball go further at the sake of the entire game being destroyed from the inside out and not being protected? See, we have to answer the question of what do we want? Not just about me hitting it further. What do we want for all of us and the better and higher good? Because in some ways, that's the heartbeat or essence of Tathata Golf. It's looking at the game of golf from an instruction perspective, from an equipment perspective, from a golf ball perspective, for the betterment of the game and coming together to protect those who were before us, those who are here now, and those who are coming to the game. We never developed this company to make money right here and be a fad, or to play in the enigma and a sense of current mechanics or golf instruction, or all the different things that you see trying to be sold to each and every golfer that are so very random. We wanted to be a place that would stand the test of time, that would be here for you to be counted on for the entirety of the game of golf. And thank you, Jennifer, for asking that question and giving me an opportunity to, to speak on it. I also want to thank all of you for being here right now and tuning in to this show. Thank you guys for being here. If you want your questions answered on next week's episode, please feel free to reach out to us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email us at info at